Hello, brothers and sisters. Michael Humble, Seeker of Truth, for the name of God, the twilights, and the rapture. Let's start in uh, Psalm 113. We are watching for the Lord on this channel. We know we are in the season that he's going to be here any minute, any day. Um, last couple videos, we have high watch dates, one that is past 525, which uh, was 17th day of the second month on the Hebrew calendar. We are considering Ascension Day, which would be um, calculating it the same way. Uh, would be June 8th. We are going to look at something in between. We're going to end up looking at June 2nd, June 3rd, and the reasons why. I was just going to do a video on Twilights. Watch where Father takes this. It, it's jaw-dropping. <clears throat> And I just caught this. I prepared the teaching. I finished preparation at 124. You'll see why that matters. Uh, just in him stamping things. And uh, I just was about to read this to begin the video. And uh, he showed me the emphasis of this. Psalm 113, verse 1. Praise you the Lord. Praise, O oh, you his servants. Sorry. Praise you the Lord. Praise, O oh, you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 2. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for from this time forth and forevermore, from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Oh my gosh, is that gorgeous. <laughs> All right, so we have the name of the Lord tied to the rising of the sun. Let's consider that. So in this case, and we know that Almighty God has many names. We are going to look at the name Yahweh or Yahweh. The very breath of life. I know I've done that a bunch. I still love it. Sorry. No, I'm not, though. <clears throat> yod Hey vav Hey In Hebrew. It literally means, Behold the hand. Behold the nail. And we're going to see how his name ties, does exactly tie to the rising of the sun. And then we're going to see how it ties to the rapture, at the very least, signposts that his son is going to be here any minute, um, if not, marking the day. You know, people have said, well, now that you've like said it could be that day, uh, it can't be that day. That is absolutely ridiculous. A ridiculous thing to say. What if there's somewhere... Somebody on the planet, like, picking every day. Oh, the rapture can't happen then. No. Even if we highlight the day or we recognize him highlighting a day, we still don't know that we know that we know that it's that day for sure. Because there's too many variables. So, watching a day does not negate it from being the day. Doesn't mean it is, doesn't mean it isn't. But we we recognize his signposts and him bringing us along. Come on, let me show you the next cool thing while you're waiting. I know you're in a wicked, wicked world that gets darker by the second. And I know you need strength. He says, let me build that hope in you. The blessed hope of my son's return, saith the Lord. And he is, and he does. And this is another shining example of it. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore from the rising of the sun. 
Okay, behold the hand, behold the nail, is a picture of his son on the cross, which of course is the way, the truth, and the life, our very salvation. There is two hands, no argument there. There is four nails. It is a four-part model. It transfers into a four-walled temple model. And uh, we're not going to get into the walls part of it, but we have in uh, Divine Wisdom of God and some other places. And it's absolutely amazing information. But we're going to focus on this part of it. So there is four nails. It's a three-part believer gathering, but a four-part model because Jesus Christ is the beginning He's also the ending, the completion of the true temple, which is our family. So Jesus Christ, he's the first nail. In Hebrew, behold the hand, behold the nail. In ancient Hebrew, the Vav, the sixth letter, value six, is literally a picture of a nail. And... So there's four nails. Jesus Christ is the first one. And we don't gather him. He gathers us. But he is the beginning. And then a three-part believer gathering. First fruits, main harvest, 99 sheep, bride of Christ, corners and gleanings, lost sheep or little sister. Okay. 99 sheep, main harvest, first trumpet, Lost sheep, little sister, last trumpet. And so this first fruits, Jesus Christ and the first fruits believers, now called the 24 elders, make up the wave sheaf offering. Not going to get deep into that right now, but that had to be done before the main harvest could be done. And this is the 100 sheep. So, yes, there's four nails, but in the end times... There's two hands. Behold the hand, behold the nail. So it emphasizes the four-part model, but two hands. And notice we have 42. Okay, that's the length of Jacob's trouble in between the first and last trumpet. And we have 24, and that gets into a whole bunch of cool stuff. Jesus Christ, he walks in the midst of seven golden candles. He's number four. So if we put four at the heart here of the cross, he goes and gets 99 sheep, four times six, 24. He goes and gets the lost sheep. Well, I did that backwards. He goes and gets 99 sheep, four times six, 24. He goes and gets the lost sheep, four times six, 24. Jesus and Strong's is 24, 24. And then we have 24 elders. Four goes get six, 24. It's 24 elders okay our father communicates he's the communicator of the universe and he communicates through everything he doesn't waste space communicates in his message in the heavens in his word in every pattern that he makes hey he says build it exactly like this why what's it matter if it's like oh because it's a communication Okay, so we got four sixes. What is 6666 six, six, six in, you know, when we hear 666, six, six, our mind immediately goes, that's the adversary, Antichrist, and it is. But that's not all it is. There's duality to many things, especially this. So, righteousness, because we are righteous, he is made unto us righteousness, justification, sanctification, and redemption. 6666 is righteousness. And then we have the three-part believer gathering, first fruits, main harvest, corners, and gleanings. So the first one, six, is first fruits. The second one would be could be represented by it's the second one it's six and six is the main harvest and the 99 sheep 
and then we have the last one, 6, 6, and 6 is 18. 6, 12, and 18. Now, how would that, and that's the name of God. Well, what does that have to do with the twilights? Well, we're going to look at that. Before we do, let's look at a couple verses that couple with what we're talking about. Psalm 19, verse 1, The heavens declare the glory of God, and His firmament shows His handiwork. Where is the rising of the sun? It's in the heavens. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night bringeth, showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. So if you think about the sun and its line, its circuit, and it's as a bridegroom coming out of its chamber. Well, if you're hidden in a chamber or secret place and you come out of it, that's when you get seen, right? So it makes sense that that would be part of the mind picture is sun rises when that sun gets seen or comes out of his chamber which is a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. And why does he come out of his chamber? Why does the bridegroom come out of his chamber? To go get the bride, of course. We're understanding the figures that Father is presenting. His going forth is from the end of heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. There's nothing hid from the heat thereof. Let's go to Psalm 113 we just read. So let's go to Psalm 50. Or we read Psalm 113 a few minutes ago. The name of the Lord is to be praised from the rising of the sun. Psalm 50 verse 1. I know it's in here somewhere. Probably comes after 49 and before 51. Sorry, guys. Okay. 50 verse 1. The mighty God, even the Lord, has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God hath shined. Our God shall come. Okay. Revelation 22. Once again, this last message our Lord puts in right before the end of the word. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify of these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David and the bright and morning star. I've said this a bunch, so if you've been following along, you know what I'm going to say next. Many teach that that's Venus. Oh, it's definitely not. It's the sun. The sun is as a bridegroom. And we know Jesus Christ is the bridegroom. Venus is the star that shows up most and brightest as a morning star. And so it be in that way fashioned like unto the Lord and it gets its light from the sun. And so Venus represents the bride. So sun, bridegroom, 
Venus Bride. So the sunrise, you know, if you've ever watched a sunrise, you know that before you see the sun, it's like starting to get light outside. That period of time from pitch black to when you see the sun, sunrise, is called twilight. And there's actually three twilights. And they happen to be at 18 degrees when the sun is 18 degrees below the horizon. That's 6 plus 6 plus 6, isn't it? Three vobs. That's called astronomical twilight. Then the next one is at 12 degrees. That's 6 plus 6. Two vobs. That is called nautical twilight. And then there's 6 degrees, one vob below the horizon, called civil twilight. I had to pause the video because I remembered that he had put in my head I needed to go look at what time nautical twilight was at, or the twilights in general, but whether you say the, the six degree one is the, the first fruits, that figure makes the most sense, first bob. Either way you look at it, the middle one is the 99 sheep, the nautical twilight. And that just happens on, on June 2nd, which is the day we're going to highlight, June 2nd, June 3rd. It's at 432.0 or 4320, the waters of Meribah. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that's okay, but many do. And uh, you're going to see significance whether you do or not by the time we're done. So 432, nautical twilight in Jerusalem on June 2nd. On June 1st through 3rd, actually, for the record, and only those days. At least this time of year. Okay. The Spirit of God moved across the face of the waters. I think I'm messing that up. Let's go there. Genesis 1. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. That is without form and void, for the record. It's complete black, spiritually and otherwise. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Light is number 216. That happens to be 6 times 6 times 6. We are lights in Him. Him in us is the light of the world. So, we've covered this stuff. We have the twilights that tie into his name. Is to be praised from the right. This is the rising of the sun. And where does it get to? At sunrise itself. Phi on the horizon. All right, let's uh, let's go to Malachi four. Now, chapter three in Malachi ends with verse eighteen, which is the forty ninth verse, and the next verse is four one point zero. 4, 9, 4, 10. You may or may not know why that's significant. So, 4, 2. Let's see, 42 months of Jacob's trouble. 
that's interesting. It's the 51st verse, Malachi 4, 2. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. I said one time a long time ago the word likened us to calves and oh, somebody didn't like that at all. Uh, I didn't write it. I'm just reading it. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be as ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Grow up as calves. Another word for calf uh, is heifer. Let's go to Hebrews 9. And verse 13. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify it to the peering of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? You know, we really should have started in verse 12, which is the 154th verse. 6-2 is the 154th day of the year. 6-3 is the 155th. Covering these two verses, Hebrews 9-12, verse 154. Hebrews 9-13, verse 155. So we got 6-2, 6-3. June 2nd, June 3rd. Neither by the blood of bulls and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify it to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Now, we know if we read through this whole account, if that could have got us to the Father and truly cleansed us, the blood of bulls and goats, we wouldn't have needed Jesus Christ to do what he did. But he didn't. It took his blood, that innocent blood, the true Passover lamb, the true bullock, or heifer. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer heifer number 1151 from 4921, Day of Declaration, where I was, it's 1151 days to June 2nd, 2024. Count it inclusively. If you just counting, use it as a counting point, it brings us to 6324. And if you go from 410, it would be 63 and 64. Now it's June 1st through June 3rd where that nautical twilight is at 432.0 waters Meribah.
Let me throw this in there. So 10 is court in session, verdict to be rendered. Didn't learn that from any man. That's from our father and how he uses numbers. And let's go back to Psalm 50. slow page turner today. Psalm 50 and we read verse 1 before. Now we're going to go to verse 10. For every beast of the forest is mine and the cattle on upon a th and the cattle upon a thousand hills. Well, it's a three-part gathering. Ten is court and session verdict to be rendered. What is ten times ten times ten? A thousand. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And every other hill. But clearly there's a figure there. And why he uses a specific number. Sorry about my glasses. Two-part gathering at the end. See, the court and session verdict to be rendered represents a point in time where someone denies Christ or, or confesses him as Lord. Two hands. Behold the hand, behold the nail. Two-point gathering at the end. Ninety-nine sheep, lost sheep. Ten times ten is a hundred sheep. Let's go to Job 38, verse 7. When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth as it issued out of the womb? That's a flood of enemies that's coming, or a reference to it. And right before that is when the morning stars sang together. See, our Lord is the bright and morning star, the sun. We're fashioned unto our Lord, so in figure, we are morning stars. Together, when they sang together, that's number 3162. Well, the three is for a three-part gathering. And 162 references the two parts at the end because phi is 1.62. Sorry, I, I don't know why I have to do that every time, but I just seem to. We also have 31, which is message, and 6-2. Does that mean June 2nd? I don't know, but it might. Calves, as calves of the stall. Back to Malachi 4, 2. Jumping around a bit on you. First use of that is Exodus 32, 4. Interestingly, on June 2nd, the diameter of the moon is 32, 4. It's 32.40. And... The first use of calves is Exodus 32, 4.0. Now, in pattern, that's 32, 40. On March 2nd, tell them yet 40 days. And number 32, 40 is to cast out or cast down. It's also to leave or depart. Calf, number one use of calf. First of all, it's number 1241. 
and I said that wrong. Cavs is number 5695. Okay, and its first use is Exodus 3240. Tied to the diameter of the moon, which changes constantly. Don't ask me how. It must be the diameter per the appearance to us. Calf is number 1241.0. That's 124 and 410. First use, Genesis 18.7, which is verse 432.0. What time did I say that nautical twilight was? On 6, 1 through 6, 3? 432. And again, just like the 3240, this is 32 in 40. It is the waters of Meribah. The 4,320th verse in the Bible is speak unto the rock. If you've been following along, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I have to go get my grandson to take him to work. He's at a friend's. I'm going to pause this video. I don't know if it'll be paused when I get back. I might have to start all over. So anyway, to you it'll just be a second. Hopefully I'll pick up right where I left off. Can you shout at me that we were right here when I get back? Because, oh my gosh, is the rest of this mind-blowing. I love you guys. Pause you. See you soon. Hey, it stayed paused. Wow, that's an answer to prayer. Okay, if I catch my breath. So, we... <clears throat> I know, let me review for myself a little bit, even though you don't need it. Um, we just saw that Calves is uh, first use Exodus, or the number for it, for Calves. Exodus 32, 4.0. And uh, Calf, number 1241.0. First use, Genesis 18.7. Verse 432, or 4320, waters of Meribah, tied to the diameter of the moon. Oop. Sorry. Love that tie, too. Um, no, the diameter of the moon was 32.4. Okay, so I'm sure you guys have that straight. Sorry if I'm confusing you. We saw 3240 to cast down or to depart. And uh, first use, Genesis 215, we did not look at. So, and the Lord God took the man and put him. That is that number... Thirty-two forty, and put him in the garden of Eden. And the Lord God took the man and thirty-two fortyed him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. See, that'd be a full circle figure of us. You know, he feeds his flock among the lilies uh, in the garden, so to speak. Okay, so we're looking at 6-2 and 6-3, June 2nd, June 3rd. On June 2nd, well, as long as we're on 4320 and the waters of Meribah, the flood of enemies that's coming, both 3240 and 32 or 4320 speak toward it. 6 times 3 times 24 is 432.0. Okay, so we would have beginning of the flood with the 1241.0 tied to the verse, Waters of Meribah, tied to an exact date, 6 times 3 times 24 is 432 
Now, if you remember the Devil's Comet, it's closest to Earth on 6224. But on 6324, its magnitude goes to 6.66. So, on a day that equals Waters of Meribah and the 32-day, 40-day warning on March 2nd, tied to the believers going to the garden, and hell on earth. Devil's Comet closest to earth, also called Mother of Dragons, magnitude 6.66. On June 3rd. Now its distance when it's closest to Earth on the 2nd. Is 144 million miles. 6 times 3 times 2 times 4. Is 144. So we have. Just with the Devil's Comet. A triple pin on 6263. Nautical twilight at 432, tying it in with the rising of the sun. And I feel like I've made that confusing now because now it's a little confused in my mind. But let me know if it is and I'll have to recover it because it's absolutely amazing. What else? I said on 6-2 the diameter of the moon, which is in Aries, by the way, was 3240. It also uh, becomes 3249, or warning on 3-2, declaration on 4-9 where I was. And it does that. It, it stops being 3249 at 30756. 756 is Arkomai to begin to rule, and 4 times 9 times 21 is 756. We also here have 324 and Divine Order. All this stuff just so intricate. Intricately intertwined. Intricately intertwined. Now on 6-2. Okay, so we understand the believers are likened to um, calves, which are bullocks, which are sons of the bull. Okay, Taurus is the bull and Taurus represents the father in the heavens and so for on on June 2nd there is four planets and the sun that are in Taurus with nautical twilight being at 432.0 so the sun, the bridegroom, and Venus, the bride, are together in the head of Taurus on 6-2. Jupiter, representing the man-child, and Mercury are together near the heart of Taurus. And, you know, that could be argued that that represents Michael and his angels and Gabriel, the messenger in Taurus while the bride and bridegroom are together in the head and Uranus is also or Uranus is also in Taurus and it's at a distance of 20.54 astronomical units now that's full circle in 254 <clears throat> in return O Lord Return, O oh Lord, how long is simple English Gematria 254? And he led us to that 
I don't know, a couple years ago now. Oh, and, and Jupiter, the man-child, meeting with Mercury near the heart of Taurus is magnitude 1.84. Jesus the Christ is 184, simple English gematria. The man who executes his counsel from a far land, the man, Hebrew Gematria 184. I hope you guys can read that okay. You know, in closing, if we look at it like this, the first Vav... Christ and then the three part believer gathering. So the first believer gathering, first fruits, the 24 elders, and then the second one is nautical twilight tied to the waters of Meribah, 4320. And then the third one, notice that the lost sheep, the corners, and gleanings are tied to the direct opposition of 666. In Jacob's trouble, 42 months long. Six two, six three, six twice it'd be the nautical twilight and the main harvest lot 99 sheep going home lost sheep six three the third six into jacob's trouble hopefully that didn't make it more confusing let me know if i need to redo this you guys it's cool information from Mr. Cool, and that's not me. <laughs> Goes without saying. I love you guys so much, and keep watching for the Lord. He is coming. I'll see you soon. Happy Memorial Day. <laughs>